to what we know versus what we don't know about space, I feel like what we do know would be the shorter list. We definitely aren't alone in the cosmos, but everything else out there is both so close, but too far away to learn more about the intriguing who's its and what's its. Question for y'all, what do you fear most about the great unknowns of space? Mine make up most of today's list, but let me know yours in the comments and let's get cracking. Not to start off today all Incredible Hulk, but have you ever considered the real life implications of gamma ray bursts? Like they sadly aren't gonna give you incredible superpowers, but they could possibly easily spell out the end of your life. No biggie, right? Damn, there goes my dream of being Captain Carter 2.0. What can I say? Women with muscles are extremely attractive to my brain. So technically speaking, astronomers have scanned the skies and found no immediate threat of a star exploding in our cosmic faces. The nearest stars that are likely to pop off, if you will, are simply too far away to be a hazard. So good to know I can look up at the skies at night and not have to worry about one of those pretty lights randomly going kaboom. Can you imagine what that would look like though? I'm picturing a mini fireworks moment, but with something a lot more dangerous falling from the sky. Yeah, no thanks. Sadly, I'm not talking about reasons to feel safe thanks to astronaut discoveries today. That would be far too easy and a shorter list. There's a bug coming and it's a biggie, but <laughs> there are bigger, deadlier cosmic threats that have a much larger range and are much more difficult to detect. These are the gamma ray bursts or GRBs for short. These happen when an exploding star triggers the formation of a black hole in its core. Black holes are not fun folks, not fun at all. The material of the dead stars swirls around the newly formed black hole, compressing and heating up as it does. Complex forces trigger the launching of massive jets of gamma ray radiation, which is the most powerful kind of radiation. Think of it like the deadliest x-ray you can imagine, not fun. GRVs are among the most energetic events to occur in the entire universe and have been implicated in previous extinction episodes here on Earth. When the gamma rays blast over Earth, they strip away our protective ozone layer, exposing the surface to the full onslaught of the sun's ultraviolet radiation. And that ozone layer is already hurting as it is, with irreversible global warming still very much a thing. GRBs can originate from stars much farther away from Earth and still be deadly, meaning that we need to get better at mapping as many stars in the galaxy as we possibly can. Thankfully, the average time between disasters is about 10 million years, so I think we're still safe for now. But I'm not a history expert, so let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. What pops into your mind when I say, mm, picture this, a cosmic catastrophe of mind-bending proportions, an astronomical nightmare? Hey, let me know in the comments. I like being dramatic. I'm talking about the unnerving possibility of Earth being swallowed by the sun, a scenario that sends shivers down the spines of astronomers, astrophysicists, and regular human beings alike. Now, before you start packing your interstellar survival kit, let's delve into the cosmic intricacies that make this threat both captivating and quite frankly, terrifying. So our sun, that familiar celestial furnace that's bathed us in warmth for billions of years, is not as static and predictable as it may seem. In about 5 billion years, it's slated to transform into a red giant, a phase in stellar evolution where it expands to engulf its surroundings. So Earth, nestled comfortably in the habitable zone, might find itself in the crosshairs of the sun's impending expansion. The red giant phase is like the grand finale of a celestial fireworks display, but instead of awe-inspiring bursts of color, it unleashes a slow and inexorable embrace that could spell the end for our home planet. As the sun expands, it will devour Mercury and Venus with an insatiable cosmic appetite. Earth might just squeak by its clutches during the initial expansion phase, but don't breathe that sigh of relief just yet. As the sun's outer layers drift away, a process that resembles the graceful shedding of a star's outer wardrobe, it leaves behind a dense core known as a white dwarf. Now, white dwarfs aren't any cosmic cuddle buddies. Their intense gravitational pull can wreak havoc on any nearby celestial bodies, and Earth might be caught in a gravitational dance of doom, which sounds fun, but it isn't. Yeah, let's not get too lost in the apocalyptic reverie. The distance at which Earth orbits the sun during its red giant phase is a little bit uncertain, adding a cosmic wild card to the mix. If we're lucky, Earth might end up far enough to dodge the sun's gravitational grip. If not, Let's just say it's not going to be a picnic in the cosmic park. The intricate ballet of celestial bodies and the cosmic dance of gravitational forces make predicting our fate a challenging endeavor. It's like trying to choreograph a dance with a partner whose every move is unpredictable. And the consequences of a misstep are astronomical, literally. Reminds me of a dance partner I had a few years ago who kept trying to convince me that a slush rumba was a real thing. Spoiler alert, it wasn't and the guy had two left feet and we were dancing in actual slush. While the prospect of Earth being swallowed by the sun is a disconcerting one, it's also a stark reminder of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of the cosmos. Our sun, a seemingly eternal beacon of stability, is gonna eventually transform into a cosmic behemoth that could alter the destiny of our pale blue dot. That's curtains for us, folks. Not to get all Looney Tunes on you. Might as well state the obvious big concern. Asteroids. I'll start with the quote unquote little guys and then we'll move on from there. So every few years an asteroid the size of a bus slams into our atmosphere at a speed of about 70,000 miles per hour. When it detonates, it releases energy equivalent to a medium scale nuclear explosive. Thankfully most of these interlopers detonate over open ocean and high up in the atmosphere. But eventually our luck's gonna run out. 
and a metal-rich asteroid capable of surviving its screaming descent through our atmosphere will aim itself squarely at a densely populated portion of the globe. Our only hope will be to develop an early warning and deflection system so we can launch a spacecraft at the incoming asteroid in hopes of changing its course. But if not, that's curtains for whatever poor people get in the way. Is that scary enough for you? If not, just ask the dinosaurs how fun it is to be hit by an asteroid a few miles across. I have personally visited Jurassic World, and trust me, the dinos there are still feeling the generational impact from the original devastating disaster. Yes, while dinosaurs are still technically around, they're now called birds. Not Tyrannodons, a major impact 65 million years ago destroyed roughly every single land species larger than roughly 100 kilograms, including all but a few lineages of the dinosaurs. The impact was so powerful that it shook Earth like a bell, triggering volcanic eruptions around the globe. It kicked up a giant plume of dust that enveloped Earth in a millennia long fallout winter. So if you're currently complaining about mild winter weather being cold, just imagine a deep freeze where you're forced to isolate long term. Again, I don't know about you, but my mental health can't take another long term isolation stint. Thankfully, these planet scale disasters are much rarer than the smaller asteroid impacts that only cause local devastation. They seem to crop up every few million years or so. And the last one was about 10 million years ago. So whatever detection and deflection system we develop for small scale asteroids, better be prepared, because it's inevitable that we'll be putting it to the ultimate test one of these days. Hey, anybody know of a good doomsday bunker situation that could hold a small village? Just asking for rhetorical purposes. Well, I've already talked about the possibilities of the sun ending everything for humanity, how about we revisit some more scary solar stuff? So picture this. I know, it's my favorite thing to say today. It's 1859 and telegraph operators are going about their business, transmitting messages across the wires. Everything's normal until the sun decides to throw an interstellar tantrum. This wasn't your average sunspot activity. This was the Carrington event, a cosmic haymaker that rocked our planet with a deadly electromagnetic storm. The telegraph operators, unsuspecting victims of the sun's celestial wrath, got more than they bargained for. Literally shocked, shocked, when the storm passed, they witnessed the northern lights putting on a show as far south as Miami. It was like the sun was flexing its cosmic muscles, letting us know it could disrupt our earthly communication lines with a nonchalant burst of solar energy. Show off. Now, let's dive into the cosmic nitty gritty. These solar outbursts, scientifically known as coronal mass ejections or CMEs, aren't exactly a rarity. The sun, our celestial life source, throws these tantrums more often than you'd think. It's like the sun has a mood swing, and when it happens, our electronics bear the brunt of it. Tree ring data, acting as Earth's historical record keeper, reveals a chilling fact. Ejections 8,000 times more powerful than the Carrington event occurred tens of thousands of years ago. But here's the catch. Ancient civilizations, lacking smartphones and satellites, didn't really bat an eye. Why? Because these cosmic storms, well, dramatic, had no immediate impact on their analog lifestyles. So fast forward to today, and we're living in an interconnected digital age. Our entire existence is intertwined with these lovely, delicate electronic systems. Now here's the kicker. Based on past solar observations, it's not a question of if another Carrington level storm will hit, but when. And on average, it seems like the sun likes to throw these disruptive parties every century. Sure, a Carrington level storm might sound like a minor inconvenience, a temporary glitch in our electronic matrix, but let's entertain the worst case scenario for a moment. Imagine a world where the sun's cosmic tantrum isn't just a flicker, but a full-blown shutdown of our civilization. It's like hitting the reset button on everything we've built, leaving us in a technological blackout. I know there's already been a TV show that entertained that idea, and if I remember correctly, it was pretty good. As we peer into the cosmic future, the sun stands as both our life giver and potential game ender. The cosmic clock is ticking, reminding us that the next solar storm could be just around the corner. So the question remains. Are we prepared for the cosmic shakeup that might be lurking in the not so distant future? I don't think we are. Ah, stars, those cosmic titans that dot our night sky seem like the eternal guardians of the cosmos. But the truth is, the cosmic dance they engage in is far from static. Imagine stars as dancers in that celestial ballet I mentioned earlier, swirling in orbits around the galactic center while also engaging in a graceful game of cosmic tag, moving here and there like fish navigating a galactic ocean. Our nearest neighbors in this vast cosmic neighborhood aren't going to maintain their current positions indefinitely, though. The cosmic clock is is tick tick ticking, and over astronomical timescales, a formidable actor might enter the stage, an oversized star, a celestial behemoth that could potentially pose a threat. These massive stars, when they meet their cosmic demise, do so with a bang, a supernova explosion capable of tearing away our precious atmosphere. Now let's talk about a little sneakier cosmic threat, one that doesn't announce its presence with the dramatic flare of a supernova. Enter the Kylo Nova, a cosmic collision between two neutron stars, the remnants left behind when giant stars breathe their last. Unlike the flamboyant supernovas, Kylo Novas are a rarer breed, but their subtlety lies in their size. These neutron stars, though powerful, are elusive and harder to detect, like cosmic phantoms that can tiptoe into our cosmic backyard before we even realize it. The cosmic detectives on Earth, armed with telescopes and data crunching algorithms, have yet to find evidence of a deadly supernova or Kylo Nova event in our planet. Its past. But as any cosmic theorist will tell you, the future is an open book. 
its pages yet to be written. The cosmic stage is set, and the actors, including those potential interstellar threats, they're just waiting in the cosmic wings for their cue. And that brings us to the end of our time, and I'm good with sticking here where I am on Earth. Thank you very much. No explosions for me. I like my life as chaotic as it currently is. I've been Alexa, your resident ooky spooky girly. And if you enjoyed my ramblings today, could you help us out by giving this video a like, subscribing if you aren't already, hit the bell for more NASA chatter from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos, and I'll see y'all next time, you lovely spooky people. <laughs>